Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery on YouTube. I hope you are doing well. Today we're going to talk about glazing. I know several of you have wanted uh, me to talk about this, and I have talked about it one previous time at least. I did a vlog uh, quite a while back where I talked about how I learned to glaze, uh, but some of you may have missed that or knew since then, so we're going to talk a little bit about glazing today, so let's go. So in short, glazing comes down to a few different ways that you can apply the glaze. There's brushing, dipping, dripping, dropping, pouring, and spraying. Yeah, I went through that really fast, so let me slow down a little bit. And to be honest with you, all these aren't actually glazing techniques. Uh, but they sounded really good together. But there is brushing, dipping. Dripping, I guess, could be a technique, but it's not one that I use. Dropping is definitely not a glazing technique, but it does happen. Pouring, pouring, and spraying. So I do utilize all of those methods of glazing other than the, uh, as I mentioned, the dripping not so much and the dropping. Try not to do that one as often as possible, but it does happen as I said. So uh, I would say that the, the, your choice of how you want to glaze ha is largely dependent on uh, the glaze you're using and the desired effect that you want in, in the end result. Uh, I have found that for the most part, I utilize the, uh, the pouring and then the dipping and then the spraying, probably the most of any of them. Uh, brushing is definitely, I utilize it a little bit, but I do it a little bit more with maybe glazes that I'm layering than I would with actually glazes, uh, glazing a whole piece, uh, whole piece with brushing. Uh, can be very difficult. A lot of times you will see the brush strokes now unless that is your desired effect. A lot of times brushing a glaze on can be very difficult to get an even coat and then to not see those uh, brush marks in the finished piece uh, can be very difficult. So that, that's something that I don't do that much unless, like I said, I am layering glazes. Uh, and speaking of layering glazes, that is probably, probably the most uh, useful thing that you could do to make your glazes unique to you. And I know uh, most people do know about this and, and I have talked about this before, but layering glazes, even in my wood kiln, even in my gas kiln and electric kiln, no matter how you're firing, layering glazes can be one of the most effective and useful tools and, and, and methods that you can use. Uh, you saw when I was uh, actually brushing the glaze on this bowl uh, previously, this glaze that I'm putting on, that I put on just the rim of this bowl here, Number one, I put it on before I do the solid color over top, which is another thing that I'll talk about uh, in just a second. But uh, that glaze I was brushing on because this glaze is a very runny glaze when it interacts with other glazes. So one of the things I like to do is put that glaze just on the rim so that I know it can give space that when it interacts with the glaze that I put over it, that when it runs, it's not going to completely run off the pot, especially on the outside. On the inside, it won't matter so much. But it would matter if too much of it ran and it puddled in the bottom. That could cause problems. I have seen that before where it would actually like uh, either crack or crater or pinhole because the glaze gets too thick in the bottom. So you don't want to uh, 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 have to deal with that if possible. Uh, another thing as far as uh, this one, like I said, brushing it on doesn't matter nearly as much. Another thing I do like whether I'm pouring or brushing with this glaze is I like to get it uneven as you can see. I don't have a, a line of glaze going around there. One of the reasons for that when I do that glaze on the bottom and then I put my copper red over top, you can see the result that I get with that. And uh, one of the things, the reasons I like to get that uneven is because you can see these drips of those two glazes mixed together and it's uneven around the piece. And that's because I've put it on uneven. Uh, I can actually dip the rim of this if I wanted to and then come back with a brush and then give it some uneven surface. Uh, that is one thing that really, I just personally that I love is I don't like to see a line of glaze uh, even if it is going to run the two glazes are going to run together I don't like to see that line around there I like for it to be a little bit more organic and, and free-flowing so that's one of the things that I like to do 
as you see on this bowl right here that bottom glaze there I've put on uneven and then if I were to glaze red completely over this it would run much similar to that there uh, now the red is very finicky as most of you know uh, as it can uh, sometimes be red sometimes be green sometimes be somewhere in between and uh, that has largely to do with the thickness of the glaze and then where it is in the kiln as far as my gas reduction kiln because that red requires a reduction atmosphere to get that specific red there. So there are other reds that you could do either an electric kiln uh, that don't re require reduction and then even the ones that do re require reduction there's a myriad of colors and, uh, and recipes out there. When it comes to glazes I mix most of my glazes uh, there are a couple commercial glazes that I purchased uh, for using in my electric kiln. Uh, mainly, Danielle used them for making her jewelry, and I've done it on a couple different ornaments. Uh, but for the most part, I mix all of my own glazes. A couple things I'll say about that. Uh, number one is that if you're going to mix your own glazes, don't be intimidated. Don't think you have to mix, uh, you have to make your own recipe. There are tens of thousands probably of recipes out there all in different uh, ranges of temperature and you can just go on the internet there are books there are uh, like I said websites where you can go and find recipes to glazes and there's no guarantee that they're gonna look good but you know most likely somebody would not put the recipe out there if it hadn't worked for them so I, I would just encourage you that if you're gonna mix your own glazes Go find a good uh, reputable book or go uh, find a website and just try some different glazes. The hard part about that is, is number one, you have to have all the chemicals. You have to spend the time to mix the glazes. But if you're going to test it, you can mix small batches. You can mix, mix 500 or 1,000 grams of a batch and it doesn't really cost you that much and then you can test it. The only problem with that is sometimes doing a small test doesn't always give you the same result as when you glaze a larger piece. So. That's just something you have to go through in testing glazes. Uh, you really will have to test that even if you buy commercial glazes, but uh, those, a lot of times, commercial glazes are, are you already know what the color is going to be because they have a test tile that you can look at uh, that's been tested, like I said, by, by a company that's selling those glazes. Uh, I've talked about all this before, like I said, but, um, but you, may not have, you may not have seen that video. Uh, but I have no problem with people that buy commercial glazes. I think if you're getting started in pottery, that is, as long as you have the money to buy the commercial glazes because they are a bit more expensive than buying the, the materials to mix your own glaze. But you already have kind of like a, a proven glaze and you can look at the colors. Uh, and then you could, honestly, some of the glazes out there that are commercial glazes are made to where you can layer them with other glazes and get all different kinds of results that will be unique to you or at least uh, the, the layers that you create and the, and the, gla the clay that you use and the way that you fire the, 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 uh, the, the firing schedule on your electric kiln or in your gas kiln, all those things will change the look of, of those specific glazes that you're buying or mixing. So uh, I will tell you that I don't fire an electric kiln anymore other than bis firing. But when I did, I, uh, I don't know if you all know who Stephen Hill is, but he's a, he's a pretty well-known uh, potter that used to fire in uh, gas, gas-fired reduction kilns, and now he does single firing in electric kilns. There, he has some uh, amazingly beautiful pots as far as the shape of his pots, the slip, the slip decoration that he does, and then the glazing that he does. Now, he, uh, he sprays like six and seven layers sometimes of glaze on a single piece, uh, to get all these different effects and colors, but I will tell you that his his some of his glaze recipes and his firing schedule for electric kilns are all, all out there and they're public knowledge. Those are some very uh, good places to start if you want to play around with some really wild colors and some a really neat uh, firing schedule. This is the same firing schedule that uh, that I used when I was firing an electric kiln because I actually didn't use any of his glazes, but that firing schedule with a slow cool uh, made every single glaze that I ever did in an electric kiln look 100% better in my opinion. And so uh, the firing schedule in an electric kiln can totally change the look of your pots and the look of the glaze that you're working with or the glazes that you're working with. So that's, that's a big tip in my opinion is to take no matter what glaze you're using and play around with the firing schedule. Now, if you're using a, a gas fire reduction kiln, you're already probably playing around with firing schedule based on when you start your reduction, how heavy the reduction is, 
uh, you know, if you keep that reduction the whole time throughout the firing, or if you if you go into oxidation at, at some point, all those are different things that you can try. They do. They all take time. They all take money. They all take energy and thought process behind what you're doing. And keeping good notes is another big tip. I will tell you that until you figure out, um, you know, exactly how you want to fire things, and maybe a, a, a one or two glazes that work well together then uh, you know that is the hard time the before you find that one or two glazes that you really love is the really hard time because then you're firing a whole kiln load of pots that may all be tests and you might not come up with too many things that work really well but once you find a couple that are promising then you can fire a load that's like 80 percent those colors and then do the other 20 percent where you're testing more things and i i love to test new things I don't do it in every kiln that I do, but I try very often to test new colors, test new combinations, uh, new glazes recipes that I find online or, or that I read in a book. Uh, just lots of different things that you can try that once you have those couple foundational colors that you can work with, uh, and then you can put tests in with the majority of the other pots being those colors that you know are pretty much going to turn out the way that you're expecting them to turn out. All right, well, there's some basic thought process behind glazing. I hope this video helped you. I hope it entertains you, and I hope it inspires you to go out and try new things when you're glazing. Uh, as I said, I hope you're not intimidated about mixing glazes because you don't have to know everything about every chemical to start that process. You just need to find some recipes, buy the raw materials, and then mix your glaze and try it out. You know what? You're never going to know how to do it if you don't try it just like throwing on the wheel unless you try it and unless you do it over and over again that practice is what will make you good the repetition is the mother of all skill i have believed that from uh for a very long time and i've seen it prove out uh in what i do with my ceramics my pottery and uh just that repetition is uh there's there's no shortcut to it and there's no replacing it and it is a wonderful thing. So like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you and I hope it helped you. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye. When it comes to glazes specifically. Oh. Sorry. You scared the crap out of me. Sorry. I didn't.